Breyer, in your experience in, in working in commenting on covering technology in the Pacific Northwest for the Seattle Times, how have things changed since you started? Well, in the last few years, this area has really been discovered. Every, every tech company you know of in the United States just about has come to Seattle to tap into the big pool of talent we've got here for software development, particularly uh, enterprise software, business software, the, the really hard stuff. It's not quite as sexy as an iPhone or anything like that, but it's kind of what's making the world go around, and a lot of it's being done here in Seattle now. Well, we talk a lot about technology being an economic driver. Uh, it truly is, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely, and one interesting phenomenon we've seen recently is the center of gravity used to be on the east side of Lake Washington around Microsoft. You know, that was really the Mount Rainier of software around here. But now we've got another center of gravity in Amazon in Seattle, and you just look around here and the sky is filled with cranes and you know, thousands and thousands of people are pouring into the city because of Amazon. You know, we, we all, all of us who live in the Pacific Northwest have friends that work at Microsoft, but all of us have asked this question, has Microsoft lost its innovation edge? Has it? Well, that's a good question. That's probably the $65 billion question, or however you want to put it. But they seem to have found their stride again recently. There's been a lot of changes over there. They've got a new chief executive. They're kind of refocused themselves on online services and mobile devices and things like that. If you judge them by their consumer devices, yes, they're, they're dead and gone. You know, the phone's not really taken off. Uh, the tablets they make are doing okay, but they're no iPad. But if you look at business services and online services, they're neck and neck with Amazon to kind of redefine enterprise computing for the next generation. And then you talked about Amazon. Amazon certainly is the innovator in retail, but there's a lot more that they do than that. Yeah, a lot of people still see that place as an online bookseller, selling some other stuff too. It's turning into kind of a Target or a Walmart online, but, but really it's a software company, it's a technology company, and they have lots of really interesting businesses. The biggest and most influential one in technology circles is Amazon Web Services, where basically they uh, build, they let other people do their computing on Amazon's network, and they rent out time, you pay as you go, and that's enormous. It's used by governments, and the CIA, you know, people all over the world are using that. There is a technology industry here in the area that um, I have been shocked at how big it is, and I, I'm just wondering if you've run across it, and it's online gaming. Oh, yeah, that's, that's another one of the pretty exciting clusters in Seattle. We have some of the top studios, the biggest games that have come out this fall, several of them have come out of the Seattle area. You know, uh, Activision, one of the largest publishers, is working with a company called Bungie in Bellevue. They made the Halo franchise for Microsoft. I think Halo is up to about $3 billion so far from this, you know, a couple hundred folks writing stories, you know, building these games, it's quite a, quite a phenomenon. Is there an opportunity for the excitement that we saw 20 years ago, believe it or not, it's, it's been that long ago, but is, is there an opportunity for that kind of excitement to take place in technology, or is, is that gone? I think it's happening now. Uh, one difference between now and 20 years ago is the amount of wealth that was being created through stock options. We had this phenomenon here, the Microsoft millionaires, you know, and so the money was really just pouring down all around and just, there was a sudden creation of wealth. I think companies have gotten more sophisticated about how they manage their stock options. So even as the companies are growing and prospering, it's not quite the crazy tidal wave of wealth, you know, rolling across their workforces that we saw 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. but, you, but if you step back a little bit and you look broadly at what they're building and that they're building long-term businesses with a big presence, you know, that, that's, that's pretty exciting what we've got now. Uh, we're, we're here at the Pacific Northwest Economic Regions Conference on Innovation and Collaboration. Um, typically, IT companies have not been particularly collaborative. Is that changing? Well, they've had to work with different uh, other companies to make their stuff work with the machines and the services people are using. You know, in the old days you might think, well, people all use the same stuff. They use Microsoft or they use IBM or they use Sun. But, you know, more and more the companies are run on a, a mix of different products and services and they have to work together because you know, my company, your company, this hotel, they, you know, they'll use products from all sorts of different vendors and they all have to work together. So there's, there's sort of forced cooperation because that's what the customer demands nowadays. Yeah, your company is the Seattle Times and a lot of people will just say point blank that print is dead and they've been saying that for years. Um, is there a way for print to live? Yeah, if people pay for it. <laughs> yeah. It's the premium product, you know, it still has the best user interface. 
you know, it doesn't take batteries. <laughs> it, it's portable, works in the rain even. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, we're exploring different models in the news business. You know, if you look at our print product alone, that is threatened, and who knows how long that will last. But, you know, we're a media company. We, you know, provide the most depth and regional coverage. And so hopefully the brand will live as our business model evolves and goes forward. How has that evolved for you? How has it changed in the way you do business? Oh, it's enormous. Uh, you know, probably about 70% of my work goes online now. You know, I report things immediately. So instead of maybe taking as much time as we might have in the past to you know, cogitate on things or, or continue reporting, we'll do kind of a sequential thing where we'll throw up the first take on something and then continue to add on it online. And then when the next day's paper comes out, hopefully we'll have a fuller, richer story by then. But that, that's multiple things we have to do at once. We really have to multitask a lot more. And part of what you do is you essentially have to predict the future too. Uh, so let's let's predict the future. Let's look ahead five years. What kind of innovations do you think that we're going to see out of this entire Pacific Northwest that may be globally facing in nature? Well, the the shift towards online computing and services will continue, and you know, five years from now, uh, it'll be much more common. Everybody will really understand this. Similar to the way you're paying for your phone and your cable service now, you'll have a similar bill that you'll pay for your software instead of just buying a computer with. An operating system, you might sort of rent that computer and pay Microsoft $30 a month and have everything. You know, all these companies want you to pay one or two hundred dollars a year for computing services. I think people will realize how many computing services they're using. They won't be as subsidized as much by advertising the way Google is now. Even Google is moving towards subscriptions. So, you know, it's not exciting from the consumer perspective, but from the business perspective, it's kind of intriguing as they shift to more predictable revenue and. You know, they convince people to pay more, basically, for what they're using. Okay. Brian Dudley, thank you very much for being with us.